So we have to watch over our soul. We are in such a critical, exciting time. It's such a powerful time that we're entering into that I'll be talking about. But God is saying to us, we have to allow his light to shine so brightly on us to let us highlight or do a Holy Ghost scan, x-ray, to see what the root system is. Because he's saying, prepare you the way for the Lord. Deal with our pride. Deal with the anger. Deal with the bitterness. Deal with the junk, the gossip, the pointing of the finger. Look at what the enemy did in 5782. We're still there. We're going to be entering into 5783 where he caused such disunity and dissension in the church. That shouldn't be. It was out there in the world, but who, who was angry with this one over vaccination, not vaccinated, over Biden, over Trump? Come on. We have to rise above that. Amen? So you say, why are you bringing this up? You've spoke about this before. Well, we need to hear it again. And we need to watch over our soul because even in these areas here, we cannot straddle the fence. We have to be either hot or cold. We can't be playing church. And let me tell you something. The fear of the Lord is coming back in a way that we have never experienced. But we cannot, we cannot be in complacency. We cannot be in sin or passivity because you won't make it. And so as a watchman, I'm telling you what the Spirit of the Lord's been saying to me. And so that's how concerned I am about this. And that, listen, God's not looking for perfection. When you look up the word in the Bible, when you read in James about being perfect, it means maturity. Right. It's not talking about living a perfect life. It's talking about being mature and grow up for heaven's sakes. And so we all have to, because for 10 years, I mean, I just saw everybody just being coddled so much. And it, it like we became navel steerers. And how did that work? It made you more depressed. I mean, we deal with our stuff, but then we cut our losses and what? We move on. Listen, I've been doing deliverance and ministry for many, many years. And I've seen what works and what doesn't, and that doesn't. We have got to, like our emotions, God made a spirit, soul, and body. I'm telling you, this is not even in my notes, but I, I know we need to hear this. Spirits, we're made spirit, soul, and body, and we have emotions, but we can't allow our emotions to override us and overtake us. That's where we stand upon the word. And in Ephesians, it says, when you stand upon the word, stand some more. And when you look that word stand up, it means to stand on the covenant promises of God. We can't allow our circumstances or the past. I'm not saying we don't deal with it, but that's not going to dictate how I'm moving forward because you have to understand the enemy wants to cut your destiny off. Right? So we say no to that. No, I'm going to live and I'm going to stand on the word because you don't, you don't know how messed up I was. My sisters are there. They can tell you. I had issues. <laughs> hey, hey. I mean, talk about depression and fear and panic. And, but I had, you have to war for your freedom. We have to war. We have to grab hold of what God has for us. The devil's not going to dictate or prophesy to my future. That's what he does. And the Lord is saying to you today, whose voice is louder? Is it the enemy's voice? Or are you listening to what the word of the Lord says? So in Matthew 26, 40, it says, Later he came back to these three disciples and found them all asleep. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping over your heart issues? Are you sleeping over the truth of the word of what God has told you to do and you've chosen to neglect it? He says, he answered and, and he awakened Peter and said to him, do you lack the strength to stay awake with me for even an hour? Keep alert and pray that you'll be spared from this time of testing. This is the word of the Lord that the Lord is speaking to us today. You should have learned by now that your spirit is eager enough, but your humanity is weak. See, God, the Bible says that in, in Isaiah, it says when we're weak, we're made strong through him. We yield our weakness to him, and he will empower us, and he will strengthen us, okay? So I like what, how it's worded here. He's saying, listen, stay awake. Stay awake. We have to stay awake. We have to be in prayer. We have to stay awake. And listen, God wants to talk to us. He's talking to us daily. He's given us ears to hear. You read in the scriptures where it says they have ears, but what? They don't hear. So right now, put your hands on your ears and just say, Lord, give me ears that hear. Because he's always speaking to us. Lord, open up my ears that I hear clearly what your word is saying, what you are saying to me about my situation, not my opinion, not what I think, not what the world thinks, not what Joe Blow thinks, but what you think, God. 
So we have to keep actively watching and praying. That's another version, and I don't remember what, which one it is. But that, it says here, I think it's the Amplified, keep actively worshiping. Wa- wa- Yeah, worshiping too. Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. And the spirit is weak, but the body is weak. I mean, the body, spirit's willing, but the body's weak. Proverbs 8, 34 says, Blessed, happy, and prosperous to be admired is the man who listens to me. I love this. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorposts. See, there's a watching and there's a waiting. For us personally. And then we're familiar with this portion in Habakkuk 2.1. It says, oh, I know I've been rash to talk out plainly this way to God. It was from the message, I think. And I, in my thinking, stand upon my posts of observation and station myself on a tower or fortress and will watch to see what he will say with me and what answer I will make as a mouthpiece to the perplexity of my complaint against him. And the Lord answered and said, Write your vision, engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and it hastens to the end, and it will not deceive or disappoint. Though it tarry, wait earnestly for it, because it will surely come. Let me tell you something. We're in that season right now. We're in this hourglass season. uh, Christine released the word, and now the Lord has flipped the hourglass over on our behalf, and now it's our time. And so um, we have to write our vision. We have to wait. We're watching. We're waiting. But let me tell you something. Now what the Lord is doing is, you know, we are called the ecclesia or the ecclesia, right? We are called to decree the word in faith. We are called to take a stand. We are called to, I know it sounds crazy, but in, in Genesis 1, it says that, or 2, or 1, it says that he's given us dominion to subdue and overthrow and overtake. And so we have that authority, not as dictators, but when we see evil in the land, do you understand that the voice of the Lord shatters? It destroys the plan of the enemy. When we are decreeing that word, okay, when in faith, it is pushing back the enemy, that battering ram. It's pushing him back. Don't underestimate who you are. Don't under, that's why do you think prayer is the thing that's the least attended because you don't believe that God is answering you don't believe the God of breakthrough well some of you may not I don't know but but it's not really attended right and so God wants to let you understand and recognize the power and the authority during worship I saw keys coming down I we have keys to the kingdom I saw the sword and I'm going to talk a little about about the sword but we're going to cut things out that need to be cut out but right now God is saying I'm raising my Gideon 300 army I need my remnant that doesn't look to the left and to the right but who knows their God and will do great exploits. And when you're taking a stand and you are expecting like a battering ram that this thing is going to shift and you're not going to back down. See, he's called us, you know, listen, you may say, but that's not my personality. That's baloney. We have the DNA of God in us. And the Bible says that he is a man of war and we have that aspect in us and we are in war. We're in a warring season. And we can't be complacent. We can't lie down and say, well, well, okay, sirrah, sirrah, what will be, will be. That's baloney. We have got to just say, wait a second, Lord, what is your word for my neighborhood? What is your word for where I'm standing for the school system? What is your word? How do I, how do I get the download here and the strategy? Show me how to pray.